This video demonstrates the export Lua generation modes in the DCS interface of Helios. Okay, here we are. We are pretending we just installed um, 1.6 and the profile we're looking at has a DCS interface, but our export Lua is not up to date. So here's, here's an example of a message that you might see. It says, hey, it looks like a Helios 1.4 stub. Um, depending on what's in your current export Lua file, this message will vary. So, you know, like always, we just go to the interface and try to set it up. Now, what this, this video is mainly about this setting right here. Um, in the previous versions, it just had a checkbox here that says, do you want to write the export Lua file or not? Uh, and now it has a number of modes in this first release. There's uh, three modes. Uh, the default one is update the file if possible, basically try to be smart. Uh, unless you had configured when you were using 1.4, if you had configured it to generate a bunch of do file lines here in this section, then the default will be different. Uh, the default will be to always overwrite, which is the second choice. But for most users, um, it will be this mode. So that's what we'll do first. Okay, so this is what's just for illustration. This is what's currently in our export script. Um, we uh, we have a Captain Zine exports call and attack view, whatever. And when you do the setup, it will uh, say that, okay, it looked at the file and it, it, it can safely make the change. It's going to make a backup and change the file for you. So let's try it. You can also cancel out, obviously, if you don't want to do that. Okay, so what it did is it found the call to Helios export the Captain Zine version and then replaced it with the one from 1.6. And so now you're good to go. And it says it's up to date, everything's gravy. Another situation you could be in um, is you could, and I'm, I have to, I'm, you know, for, for demo purposes, I'm going to fake this, right? Um, copy in a different export script. <clears throat> which is, this is like a, a full A10 interface written by Helios 1.4. You see all the code is right in here. This file is too complex for it to try to modify, so it can't really figure out what to do, so it's going to ask us. And also, it doesn't know I just swapped in another export Lua behind uh, the scenes, right, for testing, for to make this video, so I'm going to reload the status to force it to look, using this button, to force it to look at the files. And Okay, it says, okay, it looks like a complete export script. All right. Let's go check it. Again, we're still set to update if possible. We're going to um, set it up. And it says, uh-oh. So uh, it says it cannot change it for you. It can't mm, m magically edit this file because obviously it's a bunch of code. It can't understand it. And uh, in Heroes 1.6, you can't have this type of export Lua unless you're going to do it yourself. So at this point, you have two choices. If you know that this export Lua is just a big Helios 1.4 one, you know, like in this example, a bunch of code that you don't even care about because uh, A, it was written by the previous Helios version, and B, you don't need it anymore at this point because you're using Helios 1.6, then you can just hit OK and it'll overwrite it. But let's look first as what it would happen is if you are, if this export script is actually something you wrote or it's really precious, it's a very special version, and you want to manually manage it, you would cancel out of this so it doesn't overwrite it and you would change it to m the third mode, which says user will manage the file. At this point, you would then go, and you now you're on your own a little bit in the sense that you now have to, uh, uh, you obviously wouldn't do this with a Helios 1.4 generated script, but if this was your own code, you would now upgrade your code to be compatible with 1.6 or whatever it is that you wanna do. Or you could um, include um, you know, if this is an export script for something, another device or something. I don't think people really do that too much anymore. Um, but most, I think most export scripts now are just a stub with a bunch of do file calls. But if you do still have one of these older, like, giant files, um, you will have to manage it yourself or let Helios replace it and sort of, you know, start building back from that. So we're going to say, all right, up, try again to update it if possible. Nope, can't do it. It'll just replace it with the default stub that works, and then you can just work your way back from that. I included here some examples of like you know how you might call other third-party stuff. Thanks, community. All right. Um, 
I mentioned that when it makes these changes, it does backups. So here's the scripts folder. It just keeps making a copy of the export Lua when it replaces it. It appends today's date and then, you know, a number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to make it unique. When it gets to 10, it'll just call it dot overflow and it'll just keep reusing that file because it's assuming that there's probably a bug somewhere or you're just you know you know we don't want to create hundreds of backup files so at some point it'll just only have you know it'll just keep you reusing the same one until the next day at which point it'll make 10 more <laughs> so um anyways these these do not get automatically cleaned up um because they're basically they're yours and we don't know which ones of them are precious to you so you just you know clean them up at your leisure okay um, so that's the update if possible mode. It usually does the right thing. You'll notice that uh, this section here is disabled because you can't use it in the update mode because it doesn't know where to put those do file lines if you put them in here. If you want to add or delete do file lines, if you want to enable the section, you have to be in the always overwrite mode. So in this mode, you're able to configure um, a, a do file like this. And then when you set it up, it says, I'm, I'm, I'm configured to, to overwrite, so everything in the file is getting blown away. I mean, it's getting uh, moved to a backup file. So when you do that, it just uh, wrote a new uh, file, which unfortunately looks very similar to the one we had, so that was a bad demo. Um, <laughs> I should have changed to a different version of the file first. Okay, so let's try that again this time uh, as a new user coming in. So we would have had our um, 1.4 file. Uh, we pretend we start in the state and it says, hey, this export Lua is not quite right. Um, the stuff I'm configured to, um, it looks like an export script, but it's not mine. So um, you, when, you, when you set it up, now it will replace the whole file. See, that looked much, much more convincing, right? Okay. Um, so at this point, it, this is a, a fully generated file. At this point, it owns the file. If you make changes, it will get upset with you, right? If you, um, you know, if you add one of these things in, whatever, you're not really supposed to do that uh, because this file is now owned by DCS, uh, by, by Helios, and it'll keep getting upset. Uh, you can, of course, at that point, just ch switch to update if possible, right? And now everything's cool again. It won't actually write these anymore because you're not overwriting the file, but at least it'll shut up. Or you could even turn it off entirely. Um, it's really, no, it's up to you. Okay, so that's those two modes. Um, yeah, as you, I mentioned, the, the last mode update, if, uh, sorry, the last mode user will manage the file is basically just turning the old checkbox off, meaning that it doesn't do anything. Um, so at this point, the status changes uh, to, um, tell you the export Lua is not generated by Helios. So you're kind of, you know, that's basically the shut up Helios, I know better mode. 